Phil, yep. how does the battery work? How does a battery work? Like <clears throat> electrochemical batteries. Yeah. Okay. So it's all in the name, yeah? <laughs> electrochemical battery. If you we narrow down the term battery, because a battery could be any form of stored energy. So some people argue that just water tanks on top of a hill, 20,000 litres of water at the top of your property, flowing downstream through a little, a little uh, impeller hydro generator to a bottom storage tank, that is technically a battery. Yeah, it's a water storage battery and it will, it will provide a certain amount of work, electrical work. But that's, we're talking about electrical chemical batteries like AA size batteries, AAAs, the batteries in your car, lead acid batteries, nickel ion batteries, etc., 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 lithium batteries that everyone so on about these days. So there's two fundamental ways that a battery could work currently as far as we are consume, assuming. Let's draw two plates. Coming back to this capacitor idea. If I have a plate of, they can be dissimilar metals, they can't be the same metal. They have to be metals that will form either some form of displacement or some kind of, uh, some kind of like forward spontaneous positive motion in their charge. So let's just go straight into like lead acid. It's a simple, simple version. This is a plate of lead. It's, it's rather, literally you could just have a, a sheet of lead, yeah? And then the opposite pole, this is going to be the negative electrode, the opposite pole is going to be the positive electrode. This one needs to be a differential of the metal. So it's got to be a higher energy state than lead. It can be lead oxide, or it can be lead dioxide, yeah, lead peroxide. So in this example, what is actually happening in this battery, we've got a little bucket, and let's draw some electrolyte. Let's make that sulfuric acid, yeah, five mole. So this is the, it's like a car battery, effectively. A really, really low down model of a car battery. What happens is, the, there's an actual chemical reaction that occurs of, during charge. So, can I have the blue bit of chalk? <clears throat> this will blow your brain away. Charge never ever, char never puts anything into the battery, yeah? So, every time that you've ever charged a battery, you've never actually input any kind of extra amount of force into the battery. This is a pump, it's called an electric pump. So that you have a pump which simply causes charge here to be depleted and charge here to be pushed to a higher state. You're, you're pumping charge in this direction and there's a counter component to that. So electrical pumping, yeah, you've got your, your 12 volt charger attached. <clears throat> this funky little plate oxidizes, it increases in energy state and it forms a different compound entirely, a completely different compound. So this was lead, this was a lovely grey compound. This is lead dioxide, lead peroxide. This is like a chocolate brown, really dark brick red kind of compound. <clears throat> this one is unstable and it doesn't want to stay there. So as soon as there's an opportunity for it to be reduced, yeah, it wants to give away some of its, its charge and it wants to return to a stable place, and so it discharges in the opposite direction. And it causes this one to become oxidized. These are like two swings, yeah? <coughs> they keep kind of bouncing back and forth in each other. So this is one version of the battery. The downside to this form is that it's slow and it takes a long time to charge and, and it's a slow discharge because what you're actually doing is you're having to change the chemical composition, change the actual compounds on this electrode. So that it's like a slow uptake, slow projection sort of charge. An alternative, yeah, another one, this is electrochemical. There's a form of battery which is electrostatic. And so electrostatic batteries, if we draw this little, you know, funky, I, this is the world's perfect battery, I think. <clears throat> electrostatic batteries are where I'm not interested in chemical reactions on compounds forming on the plates. I purely want to cause a magnetic attraction to metallic charged particles or components here in the dielectric, in the liquid, in the, the medium. So if I can cause, let's say that we've got a whole bunch of these positively charged components and I can cause this pole to become really massively negatively charged, then what do you think will happen to all of the floating, randomised, positively charged metallic components, like a liquid metal? You could do like a liquid mercury, it'd kill you, but you could totally do it. Or they use things like lithium-ion um, batteries work in this kind of fashion. 
so the lithium fluoride maintains the lithium ions in, in this kind of paste solution, they all move, they get totally attracted to this plate. They don't actually do anything, they don't form metal, that's because of some other funky ways that the battery works, but there are alternative metals like sodium and potassium which would never form plate metals on here, so they work. So all of this gets sucked over here, there's now a vacuum of charge. This, is, this, is, this operates under something called electrostatic forces. So electrostatic forces are when, like, um, if you've got a piece of fluff and you've got a, a super statically charged up trampoline because you've been bouncing on it for ages, and then you get your bit of, of fluff, your cat hair, and you stick it to the underside of the trampoline and it just stays there. And you can say, well, it, they're, not, they're not magnets, so it's not that like, there's a north and south pole, the magnet attracting it. They're actually being held through electrostatic forces, and they can easily be held upside down or in different angles. So what happens here is that when we go to discharge the battery, we want all of these components, these charged components, to rush back into the gaps in the solution or in the dielectric, and then the charge that they are kind of uh, maintaining, I suppose, reduces. So these kinds of batteries, um, the modern lithium batteries are an example of this, NCA, like nickel cobalt aluminium batteries or um, uh, nickel cobalt manganese batteries. These style of batteries act kind of like capacitors. This is how a capacitor works, except the added feature of this is that, is that it's not only electrostatic charge, we've also got this actual medium that's kind of a bit like a, a reserve for a, a magnetic, or sorry, metallic ions. So, this is an example of something like the, the lithium cobalt oxide batteries. You know, your standard e-bike batteries, your electric bike, or the batteries in your Samsung phone that burst into flames, etc, 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 etc. So, this is electrostatic bar. This one is electrochemical. So these are currently the two main forms of battery storage. There's some funky other stuff if you really want to blow your brains apart. Yeah. Huh? Another video. Another video! Alright, I'll talk to you about how you blow your brains apart in the next video. Because you could do a similar kind of thing only with magnetism and capacitors and, and um, coils and ductors. So let's talk about that next.